Coach, I'll have a comment. Raise your hand. Keep it up for me for a second. How's everybody today? I think there's a lot of good things that we did in this last game. Um, you know, offensively, we didn't have a lot of critical errors in the game. Uh, made a lot of explosive plays. Uh, took care of the ball well. Had pretty good pass protection for the most part. Um, you know, defensively, you know, there were times in the game when we played really, really well. Did a good job on third down, got off the field. Uh, and played pretty decent in the red zone for the most part. Limited people scoring. Um, but then there's a, you know, we, we, we have to be more consistent on both sides of the ball and our ability to run the ball and not make critical errors. Um, and basically in special teams, when we follow fundamental techniques, we do a pretty good job of executing. And, you know, sometimes when we don't, um, obviously had too many penalties in that part of the game. And uh, some, there's the fundamental execution uh, can improve relative to consistency. So, you know, we really need to have the mindset of making improvement as a team. Um, and I'm hopeful that people can learn uh, from what they did well and build on it, and they can make corrections to the things that uh, we need to do better, whether it's discipline, high control, plan your responsibility, not making a mental error, playing with good fundamental technique. Uh, take the information and be able to uh, grow from it and get better so that we can continually improve as a team. Uh, as I said after the game, you know, we just have to walk through today. We're not really having practice. A very short walk through for corrections and stretch and stride. Um, at this point, you know, I think our team needs to do a little rest, recover, get some guys healthy, and kind of go from there. You know, Louisiana, Billy Napier, who we're very familiar with, is trying to build a program there. I think they've done some really good things there, you know, this season. I know they're one and two record-wise, and uh, but they have a good quarterback. Uh, they've got a lot of good offensive schemes. They present a lot of problems for you defensively in terms of adjustment. Um, pretty good at throwing the ball down the field. A lot of screens and a lot of short stuff that, you know, kind of RPOs that go, go with their, you know, running game. Um, they've got some pretty decent skill guys that have done a good job at wide receiver. Their defense has been, you know, very disruptive. Uh, do a lot of movements and stunning and things like that that have created a lot of negative plays. So uh, this is something that um, we need to improve on being able to block. So uh, this is something that, you know, we need to definitely do a better job of. And it was something that we had some issue with last week. So, um, you know, important week for us, you know, to get better. Um, you, you've got the players of the week, but for, you know, two and I, they have bugs to be SEC players of the week is, you know, really good. So we're very pleased for both of them to get recognized. Coach, we'll start over here on the right with Ben. How much defensive substitution or rotation were you able to do on Saturday? Is that one thing that you'd like to kind of see improve? Well, we had, you know, try to call time out because we had 12 guys on the field one, so i definitely like to not have those kind of penalties. We had a couple of those on special teams this year too, which to me is goes right back to the attention to detail stuff that you always, you know, try to focus on and get right. But um, you know, we really got better football players than to be making those kind of mistakes in a game. Um, but you know, we we didn't play as many players as it, as we'd like. Um, but you know, Texas A&M kept playing, trying to score at the end of the game. And um, we got to play some players in the front, but uh, didn't make a lot of substitutions in the back end um, because they were really going two minutes to hold for the quarter. So it was, and, you know, we, another another score in the game, and you know, they're 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 right back in the game. Coach, in the middle with Michael. There was a play Saturday where Dylan most kind of went head first into the, into the fence. Is there any? Do you have any concerns about safety, player safety, and with the fencing? We're, we're we're addressing that. They're going to try to do some stuff to the stadium there to, you know, shave that little corner off a little bit and pad it up a little better. And uh, that that was uh, something that after being here all these years, I never even noticed that until that play. And uh, that is definitely something that we are addressing. Here with uh, Charlie. What stood out to you about Billy Napier during his time?
from here? And did you think that he can make a good head coach one day? Yeah, I think Billy is a very bright guy and um, very good football coach. Uh, works hard. And, and I think he'll, he'll make a, a, a really good head coach. And um, I think he did a great job here for us. And I think they were very productive offensively at Arizona State when he became the coordinator there. And um, I, I know they present a lot of challenges for you relative to what he's doing on offense there. And I'm sure he's got his hand in that because that's his expertise. So, um, but their team is playing with a lot of toughness. They're playing hard um, and you can see that you know, he's, he's building some of the right intangibles in the program, which is always, to me, a critical factor in what you need to do to, to, to be a head coach. In the back of Cecil. Uh, coach, just to follow up to substitutions on the back end, Dylan and Mac were both in the game late, as you pointed out. How are the younger guys behind them progressing? I think we're making progress you know, in those areas, and those guys are making improvements. Um, so. We just got a, it's a work in progress. They don't have a lot of experience. They don't have a lot of knowledge. Uh, we've been able to get them some experience in some of the games. And fortunately, uh, unfortunately, I wish we could have got them a little bit more playing time in this game, last game, but uh, it didn't work out that way. Come back up here with Mark. All right. Just what does that Isaiah Bugs bring to this defense with his energy? Well, he really played well in his last game, um, and I think this last game sort of showed what he's capable of. Um, we'd like to see him do that on a consistent basis, and um, you know, this was by far his best game, the last game, and um, I think he's you know healthy, and hopefully we'll be able to build on that, and he'll continue to have that kind of performance and production in the future. A couple more here, Terry. When it does come to fixing those penalties, how do you go about that in practice and cleaning it up? Well, you know, a lot of them are undisciplined type penalties. And, I mean, we had four penalties in the kicking game, which is, you know, way beyond what we should have. Um, I think there's two different kind of penalties. You know, there's penalties where guys are trying, like a guy reaches out and gets called for a horse collar when he grabs a guy by the corner of the jersey or whatever. I mean, that's one kind of penalty. Um, guys make poor decisions about blocking people in the back or um, we have substitution errors or illegal procedure or let the clock, shot clock run out because they don't snap the ball on time. I mean, those kinds of things, you know, you can practice anywhere, anytime. Uh, but we practice these things all the time. We have officials that practice every day and, um, you know, players have to be more disciplined in the choices and decisions that they make understand the consequences of what they do and that's not been something that's been good so far for us in terms of the number of penalties that we've had. Let's wait any more. We'll wrap up here with Tony. What have you seen from Skylar DeLong and, and maybe on some of those struggles early? How, how do you kind of help a young punter get through some of those? Well, you know, the thing about Skylar is, you know, he's been a lot better in practice and done a good job in practice and actually had a really good week of practice last week. So, you know, we know he's capable. Um, I, I just think that uh, maybe his confidence in the game is not what he needs it to be right now. And I think we need to support him and try to help him uh, develop the consistency in game situations that uh, will allow him to have more success. And we certainly need for him to do that. Coach, we did have one more. We'll finish up with Chris Walsh. What does Hale Hankus mean to this team? Well, Hale's a great leader on the team. I, I think he's. Um, the epitome of all the intangibles that you look for in a player. He plays with a lot of toughness, a lot of effort, um, very smart, um, works hard every day, sets a good example for everybody else on the team. And it's really good to see him having you know, some production, scoring a couple touchdowns, catching a few passes, because he, he's one of those guys that does a lot of dirty work when it comes to the blocking part of it. And I always like to see a guy like that you know, score and get some positive self gratification for doing something that you all recognize, although we appreciate him for all the other stuff he does too. Okay, coach, thank you. Right, thank you.